Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the Samsung Galaxy S4, the successor to the Galaxy S3, which makes this one of the most important smartphone launches of 2013. Now, as you may be aware, there are actually two versions of this phone. There's a version sold in the US on carriers like AT&T, T-Mobile, Verizon, and Sprint, which supports 4G LTE in these markets. But there's a version sold internationally, which has an octa-core processor. So, in the US version, or the version sold on the carriers, we get a 1.9 gigahertz quad-core uh, Snapdragon 600 processor with an Adreno 320 GPU, but globally you get an octa-core or eight-core processor, which is uh, the Exynos 5 processor, which is basically two quad-core processors bundled together. One processor is a Cortex A15 clocked at 1.6. The other one is a Cortex A Cortex A7 clocked at 1.2 gigahertz. Now the GS4 also has two gigs of RAM. We have 16, 32, or 64 gig capacities, and there's a micro SD card slot so you can expand storage up to 64 gigs above that. We also have a 2600 milliamp hour battery, which is better than the 2100 milliamp hour battery we're used to with the GS3, and there are lots of accessories which allow you to expand storage and that sort of thing with the Galaxy S4, thanks to the fact that the back panel is removable and you can swap the batteries in and out. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at the phone itself. So we're just gonna slide out the packaging here. Now you can notice that we have this sort of wood grain texture. Uh, this is made of post-consumer recycled paper and it's also using soy ink so it's very eco-friendly. So here we have our clamshell box. We just lift it up. So inside we have Samsung Galaxy S4 Quick Start Guide. So the Quick Start Guide just tells us a little bit about setting up the phone and how to use the phone. So here we have the phone itself with the AT&T texting and driving, it can wait, so it'll remind you not to text and drive. Uh, you can see it's also wrapped in plastic. And it's very lightweight right now because there is no battery installed. So let's set that aside for just a minute while we take a look at the packaging contents. So in here we should have our literature. So we have the health and safety and warranty guide. And here we have a little pamphlet explain to us about the migration utility that Samsung offers so you can migrate your content to the Galaxy S4. A little band here. So here we have our health and safety and warranty information. Again, in that recycled paper, we have it in English and Spanish. Here we have our micro USB charging cable. Again, white to match the white phone. Of course, the uh, GS4 is also available in black. We have, also have our headsets here, which are in-ear headsets with a remote and microphone. So you can see our volume rocker and our select button and our microphone. And you can see we have our ear tips. These are in-ear headphones. Uh, these are redesigned. These are new earphones. Um, there are ear tips here. Now we also have our Samsung branded wall adapter, USB wall charger. You can see it's fairly compact. And we have our 2600 milliamp per hour battery. There we go, which we have to pop in once we get to the phone. All right, so here is our Galaxy S4. So let's go ahead and start peeling off some of this plastic, starting with the front one. So it just should lift up. There we go. Also have some plastic wrapping the edges. Peels right off. There is our GS4. So let's go ahead and take a look around. First thing we're going to need to do is install our battery. So we're going to pop this back panel really quickly here. It comes right off like we're familiar with. So there is our back panel here. You can see it's a flimsy sort of plastic which feels rigid once you get it back on the phone. All right, with the cover removed, we can take a look at the internals. And as you can see, we have our speaker grill here, which looks like it's covered in a piece of plastic. Uh, I guess you can peel it off. I'm going to leave that right now. We have our battery here, which again is 2600 milliamp hour, and you can see that this actually integrates the NFC technology right into the battery, so it's not built into the back cover like you get with a lot of other phones. So we have our micro SIM or micro SIM slot here, which obviously you have to remove the battery in order to uh, insert, which is similar to other Samsung phones. You also have your micro SD card slot, you have your camera and your LED flash, and that's about all there is to it. So let's go ahead and pop the cover back on. Now taking a look at the design of the Galaxy S4, it's actually pretty familiar territory here, but what really strikes me is just how light this phone is. This is about five grams lighter than the Galaxy S3. It's also a very similar in its overall footprint. Uh, so if you hold them side by side, you can see the footprint is very similar. So if you hold it glass to glass, you can see there's very minor differences here. Uh, the Galaxy S4 is slightly thinner than the Galaxy S3. It is slightly taller than the Galaxy S3. Uh, you can also see it's a little bit blockier than the Galaxy S3. So you can see the edge is a little bit blockier, the corners are a little bit more square uh, than the Galaxy S3. Uh, and you can see that the materials are very similar. Now the only real difference here is the fact that the glossy back panel here has sort of a 
translucent texture to it. You don't feel it when you're handling it, but you can see it when you look really closely. So if you look closer, you can see that kind of a weave pattern underneath adds a little bit to the material quality. You can also see we still have that metal edge, which is pretty familiar. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the features here. So you can see we have our power on sleep wake button as well. You have your thumb port for popping off the back panel. On the back, you have your 13 megapixel autofocusing camera capable of recording video at 1080p with a host of other features. You also have an LED flash. Down here, you have your micro USB port, which supports MHL2 as well as a USB on the go and USB hosting. And we also have our microphone. Now, if you're not sure what, if you're not familiar with MHL, this basically allows you to connect this to an HDTV using uh, the right adapter, which Samsung does sell. We also have our speaker grill down here, which incidentally is different than the GS3, which put the speaker grill up here next to the camera. So a little different design. It's actually more similar to the Note 2. You also have your volume rocker up here, so volume up and down. Up here you have your headphone jack, as well as a noise cancellation microphone, and you have a little IR blaster right there for controlling your AV equipment. Now the big news here is this new 5 inch Super AMOLED display which gives us a screen resolution of 1920 by 1080 so that's full HD over 5 inches that gives us a pixel density of 441 ppi that's versus uh, 306 ppi on the GS3 this is a 4.8 inch screen so the interesting thing here is they're able to increase the screen size without increasing the phone size so you can see the bezel is a little smaller and they've pushed the screen out to the edges which also means they uh, sort of squared off the design of the phone now they've also added another sensor here so they have an RGB sensor for detecting the ambient light conditions which automatically adjusts the screen for optimal color uh, so for example if you're watching the movie it detects the ambient room lighting so if you have warm lighting or cold lighting or whatever it will automatically adjust the temperature of the screen for the conditions so that's kind of a new feature but you still have your two megapixel front facing camera you also have which is capable of recording 1080p video you also have your ambient light sensor and your proximity sensor uh, so this camera obviously has a lot of features including the capability of seeing your eyes and the positioning of your head for software features like uh, Smart Stay and Smart Scroll. So we're going to take a look at those features as well. Down here you still have your home button here, which is pretty familiar. It looks very similar overall in terms of design. You also have your back button and your menu button. Again, the very familiar Samsung controls, which are backlit capacitive. You only see them when they're backlit. So let's go ahead and boot this up and take a look. Now while it's booting up, I should also mention that this display is using Gorilla Glass 3, which is lighter, thinner, and more durable than the uh, Gorilla Glass 2 on the GS3. So we have also our AT&T boot animation, and we're ready to start setting up our Galaxy S4. Alright, so we can change our language if we want, but we're going to select English, not German, English. Click Next. So we're going to select Automatic Date and Time, click Next. And we're going to set up Google, so yes, I have a Google account, I'm going to log into that. Now it wants me to set up my email, but I'm not going to do that right now, so I'll do that later. Now we have a Samsung account, which we can sign into or create our own, so let me go ahead and sign into that. So this is my device name, and I can change that, so I'm just going to change it to Galaxy S4. Now the next thing it's doing is showing me some of the features of the phone, such as S-Beam, Air View, Air Gesture, Voice Control, Smart Stay, Smart Pause, Smart Scroll, Easy Mode, and Adapt Display. And we'll demonstrate some of this. And you can toggle these on and off, so I'm going to toggle all of them on, uh, just because I want to show you some of them. I don't want to toggle on easy mode because we don't want to show you the easy mode. We want to show you the full mode. So let's go to finish. All right, so let's go and take a look at the user interface. Now this is running Android 4.2.2, which is the latest release at the time of filming. Uh, and they've also updated TouchWiz with some enhancements and some changes. And one of them I noticed right away is the fact that the system bar up here is now sort of floating. It's now integrated into the wallpaper, uh, which looks pretty neat. I actually saw this on the Note 8.0. I actually really like the effect. So it really looks like everything is filling the screen. Now another effect is is this little starburst effect. Uh, so you can wave your finger over the surface so you can actually see it right here. There you go. So you can see we have that air view and you can touch the screen and it gets a little brighter. You can swipe up to unlock the device. So pretty sleek effect. Now you can also activate uh, shortcuts on the lock screen so you can quickly launch to any of these apps and you can adjust or change which apps appear here under settings. So for example, if you want to swipe up, it takes us right to Google Now. Now you can also wake up the device by talking to it because it does have S Voice. Hi Galaxy! And it takes us right to S Voice. Now because this is an Android 4.2 device, we do have lock screen widget which we can add. You can see that uh, we even have some indications here. So we have the home lock screen and then we have the lock screen to the right which right now is configured for the camera mode. And we can add widgets to it. So if we go to this plus sign we can add a variety of widgets. Uh, so we have an email, Gmail, Google, Google Plus 
posts, messaging, music, Samsung Music, watch on Yahoo Finance and Yahoo News. Uh, so for example, let's just go ahead and add the email app. Let's go with Gmail. And we're going to select our inbox. So if we're in our lock screen, we can go ahead and swipe right to get to our email widget. And if we select on any one of those, it takes us right to the app. Now taking a look at our home screen, you can see this is pretty familiar territory here. So for example, you can pinch in and out to see all of your home screens in one shot and you can jump to any one of them pretty quickly. This also allows you to modify them. So if you want to change which one is your home screen, all you have to do is tap the upper icon up here and that will change which one is your home screen. You can also add home screens just by tapping here. You can add up to seven and you can also remove them just by dragging and dropping them up to remove. Now you can quickly select which home screen you want just by tapping the icons down here or you can use that little slider effect just by tapping and holding your finger. Now we also have our app drawer which takes us to all of our apps and widgets and from here you can add apps directly to your home screen. So for example if I want Instagram just tap and hold that and you can scroll to the home screen you want just by tapping and selecting the one down here from the list view. So let's put it right here. Now if you want to put anything into a folder you have to tap and hold it and go to create a folder. This will create a folder which you can name so let's say social. And there we go. Now we have a folder for which we can drop other apps to. So for example, if we want Facebook in that folder, we can do that. There you go. Now in terms of what they've included on the home screens, again, we have five of them. So we have a Flipboard widget, which we're pretty familiar with. We also have this AT&T folder because it is an AT&T phone. So we have some AT&T apps. And if you don't want that, you can just drag it and drop it up to remove. Uh, we also have our gallery app, which integrates both our offline storage and online or onboard storage. So this is all my photos from Google+. Plus. Uh, in my Google account. Uh, so it's automatically synced as soon as I log into my Google account. We also have the Maps app, which is Google Maps. We have our music player. We have email, calendar, camera, and the Play Store. We also have some widgets up here. So we have our weather widget, which we can tap on and view our local weather. We also have a Google widget for search, and we have the story album widget, which is basically Samsung's uh, way of integrating your onboard gallery as well as your gallery from your social media like Facebook. So you can create a uh, printable photo albums and that sort of things, things you can share with other people. You also have our S Health widget, which we'll talk about a bit later. We have our uh, Samsung Hub, which integrates Samsung's variety of media services like music, video, books, and games. And we have a quick shortcut to Samsung App Store. Now, if you go to the App Store, you'll see lots and lots of apps. Uh, so some of them I've downloaded, some of them are provided by AT&T, and some of them are Samsung apps, and some of them are Google apps. So here we have our apps and our widgets, so we can cycle between all of them. And you can also pinch out to see all of them as well. Now, in terms of apps, we have Samsung apps, which is Samsung's App Store. We have Samsung Hub, so let's just show you the new updated interface for that as well. Uh, so it looks pretty sharp. This is where you can purchase or rent content uh, such as music, videos, you can purchase games and books. So this is one way of integrating everything into one sort of hub uh, instead of having individual apps for everything. Now one of my favorite features of TouchWiz is the drop down menu which gives you quick access to a lot of settings. Now this is something Samsung does very well and they've given us lots and lots of toggles this time. So we can turn off Wi-Fi, GPS, sound. So if we tap sound we can turn it to vibrate, we can turn it to mute or restore sound to normal. Screen rotation, Bluetooth, mobile data, blocking mode which allows you to control what notifications you're receiving and when. Uh, power saving mode, screen mirroring, multi-window mode, S-beam, NFC, air view, air gesture, driving mode, smart stay, smart scroll, sync and airplane mode and if you want to see them all just tap the upper icon there uh, you can also go to settings which will take you right to settings and here you can control quite a few things and we're going to talk about settings a bit later now you also have quick access to your screen brightness you can set it to auto on or off and of course you can also take a look at all of your notifications here which you can expand using the two finger gesture and you can use clear to get out of it now in terms of our android controls we have our standard menu button which again is contextual so it depends on what you're doing uh, so the menu here in this case allows me to add apps and widgets to the home screen create a folder set wallpaper edit page search settings etc uh, you can also tap and hold the button and that will take you right to Google now. Now the back button of course is back or if you hold the back button it will bring up multi-windowing and multi-windowing I've demonstrated before basically allows you to use two apps at once so we can launch Chrome and then we can launch our email app. There we go, that's multi-viewing and our multi-windowing and you can use that uh, little slider here to resize the windows. This also works in portrait or landscape mode. So there you go, it's in landscape. You can slide it back and forth. Now you also have these controls here uh, to close one of the windows or swap the windows or uh, get a full screen of the window. So for example, if we wanna close that window, that's one way of doing it. Now the home button works as you would expect. Home takes you to the home screen or you can double tap it to bring up S-Voice. 
Now you can also tap and hold it to bring up the uh, recent apps menu. So here you can take a look at all of your apps and launch them quickly or swipe them out of the way to get rid of them. You can also X them all out which will close all of the apps. You can also go right to Google now from this window as well. Uh, now another thing we can do with that is just tap and hold it and it will take us to our uh, application manager. So from here you can end uh, apps in the background. You can see how much memory you're using right now. You can see what storage you're using and you can see your downloaded apps as well. Now there are a lot of software features with the Galaxy S4 and the best way to explore this is to go right to settings. So under settings you can see that everything is sort of tabbed here. We have connections, my device, accounts, and more. So if we go to my connections this is pretty basic. So you can toggle Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. You can go right to Bluetooth to set up a Bluetooth pairing. And we can also go to Wi-Fi to change how you connect to your Wi-Fi networks. Now you have NFC which you can toggle on and off, S-Beam which you can toggle on and off, nearby devices which uses DLNA so you can uh, for example share your media with those devices just by activating that feature. You can also activate screen mirroring. Screen mirroring basically allows you if you have an all share cast device like a Samsung TV or Samsung peripheral uh, you can share your screen wirelessly to those devices. Now under my device you have lots of options starting with the lock screen. Uh, so you can change how you wake up the device using the swipe gesture, the face unlock, face and voice, pattern, pin, password, or none. You also have multiple widgets here which you can toggle on and off. So if you want widgets to appear on your lock screen, that's one way of controlling that. Now favorite apps or camera is basically a shortcut from the lock screen to allow you to launch either your favorite apps or your camera which you can select here. So you have one or the other. So if you enable this, click save, you go to the lock screen and you use a gesture to swipe left to right, you can actually get to another lock screen here which will launch the camera app. So there you go, it takes you right to the camera. Now under clock or personal message, you can give priority to the clock or the personal message. The default is the personal message which is that life companion on the front. So if you go to clock, click save, you go to the lock screen, you'll now see that the clock is the priority and the personal message is gone. Now we can also modify or turn off the shortcuts that appear on the lock screen. So here we have the ones they've included and you can remove any one of them. So for example, let's say we want to remove the camera app and we want to add another one. We go right to our apps. So let's say we want Chrome there instead. There we go. And you can also move these around as well. Now you can also change the unlocked effect here so you can go back to the ripple effect or remove it all together. Uh, we can also set the wake up command so instead of high galaxy you can pick a different command. Now the display we have lots of options here so we can change our wallpaper, uh, we can set the lock screen, home screen, wallpaper, the notification panel. So here you can change what appears on that uh, drop down so all of those widgets up there or those toggles you can change. So you can move them around, so you can reposition them if you prefer. And the great thing here is that you have all of them, so you don't have to pick or choose like you do with something like the Galaxy Note 8.0 I reviewed previously. Now we can also select the screen mode so we can use the Adapt Display. If we toggle off Adapt Display, now Adapt Display automatically adjusts the screen according to what you're viewing as well as the ambient lighting conditions. Or you can automatically select these predefined ones such as Dynamic, Standard, Professional Photo, or Movie. And as you can see it gives you a little preview up here. I'm just going to use the Adapt Display. You can also change your font style and font size, touch key light duration so the length of time these stay on, display battery percentage indicator which I've toggled on, it's off by default. Edit after screen capture so it'll take you automatically to the uh, editing screen when you do a screen grab. Now when you want to do a screen grab you just swipe the screen like that, it does a screen grab and you can see it in the drop down menu right here. So there we go, we can go right to it to edit it if we want. Uh, let's go back. Now auto adjust screen tone, again this is that using that technology to automatically adjust the screen tone using that RGB sensor. High touch sensitivity so you can actually use, if you enable this, you can actually use gloves with this touch screen. It works pretty well. Now we do have an LED indicator in the upper left corner here and we can adjust those settings. So we have an LED indication when charging, low battery and notification as well as voice recording. So the blue LED lights up when you are recording voice while the screen is off. So that's one way of indicating what's going on. Now under home screen mode you can simplify the interface by going to easy mode which will basically create larger icons and simplify the layout. So this is better for Android novices, people who are not too familiar with the way Android works. Uh, so if you want less customization and easy access to everything you use more frequently that's one way of getting to it. So the Galaxy S3 although a fully featured and somewhat complex user interface 
gives you that option to simplify it for people who don't want all of that. Now we also have blocky mode, which is one of my favorite features of Samsung's TouchWiz. Uh, this is something I wish more Android devices would use, including Nexus devices. But uh, this basically allows you to disable calls, disable notifications, timers, the LED indicator. Uh, so you can toggle specifically what you want to disable. And you can also set it so that it only happens during certain times of day. So if I uncheck always, I can now set specific times of day. So for example, if I wanted to turn off in the middle of the night, that's one way of controlling it. I can also specify certain contacts that are allowed to call me even if I have this uh, mode turned on. You also have power saving mode. So if you turn on power saving mode, you have specific control over CPU power saving, screen power saving, or haptic feedback power saving. So you can toggle which ones you want to be active when you turn on that mode. So that's one way of controlling how much power your phone is using. And again, all of this is accessible from those quick access toggles up here. So if you want to turn on power screen saving mode, I have to use toggle that on, you can see it goes on. Now under motions and gestures, we have a whole lot of features here. So we have air gestures, motion, palm motion, and gyroscope calibration. But if you look at air gesture, you can see we have even more controls here. Uh, so for example, quick glance. So if we toggle that on, we can actually tap this to get a preview of it. And we're gonna swipe our hand over the screen gives us a quick view of our basic information and I'll go back to sleep. Now we also have Air Jump, which basically scrolls web pages in screen size jump. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that. There we go. Sometimes you have to get it just right, not too fast, not too slow, and it jumps up and down. Now we also have Air Browse, which basically allows you to swipe left or right, it's kind of like a back or forward button. So this works with gallery, internet, the internet browser, music player, uh, music on the lock screen and S memo. So we can try it just to show you this. So all I have to do is swipe left or right over the screen. And you can see as it reaches the end of wherever it is, it gives you a little indicator on the left side or right side. Now we also have Air Move, which works with the home screen, app list, and calendar. So if we try this, we can show you how this works. So basically you tap and hold one of your uh, apps here and you can swipe left or right to drop it around there we go now we also have air call accept and to demonstrate that what you basically do is when you're receiving a phone call and you wave your hand over the screen it will answer the phone for you now under motion we also have lots of options here one of my favorite is direct call so direct call basically allows you to automatically call anybody whose information you're looking at so for example if you're in the middle of a text message if you're looking at the contact information all I have to do is raise the phone to your ear to try it out so for example if you're texting somebody all I have to do is raise it to your ear automatically detects that it's connecting to your ear and dials that person for you so it works pretty well I actually use it a lot it's one of my favorite features of uh, Samsung's TouchWiz now we also have something called smart alert. So if you put your phone down on the table, let's go ahead and try it. The screen will go to sleep. And if you receive any notifications like missed calls or text messages, it will vibrate for you. And basically indicating that you have something to look at. So you pick it up, get a little vibration, and you can go ahead and check to see what's going on. Now we also have something a little less useful. We have zoom. So you can basically use two fingers to tap to zoom in on an image. So let's go ahead and try it. And you basically tilt the phone. So if you use two fingers here, you can zoom in and out. And you can change the sensitivity as well up here. You can also use that similar feature with browse and image. So let's go ahead and try it. So basically, you can uh, look around an image that you're zoomed in on just by using the uh, tilt motion. Now you can also mute the phone, such as when you're receiving a phone call or if you have an alarm going off, just by placing the phone face down. So let's go ahead and try that out. You hit try it. So you're receiving a phone call, I just place it face down and it mutes it for you. If you pick it up again, you'll see that the phone is still ringing. Now under smart screen, we have an extension of the smart state technology that debuted with the original GS3. So smart state we're pretty familiar with. Basically, the camera is watching your eyes and will know whether you're looking at the device or not and will put the screen to sleep. So we're pretty familiar with that. New is smart rotation. So the screen actually is able to see your eyes and knows exactly your current orientation. Uh, so basically this is useful, for example, when you're laying down and reading in bed. So it knows whether you're laying back and won't automatically adjust the screen rotation for 
for you. Uh, so for example, if you're laying sideways, it won't go into landscape mode while you're reading the book just because it detects the orientation of your eyes. Now we also have Smart Pause, which is new here as well. Smart Pause basically allows the device to detect if you're facing the screen. So if you're watching the video, it will pause the video if you're no longer looking at it. So you can toggle that on and off. And again, you also have quick access to that from the quick toggles up here. So you can see Smart Stay or Smart Scroll, which you can toggle on and off. Now you also have smart scroll technology also debuting with the GS4 and you have that tilt head feature. Basically, it's able to detect the presence of your eyes and if you tilt the screen down or up, it will scroll through the page for you. It does give you a little visual indicator which you can turn on and off if you prefer, which allows you to know if uh, the screen is detecting the uh, presence of your eyes so you can scroll uh, up and down or not. It doesn't always work, doesn't work in dim light for example, but it does work with people like me who are wearing glasses. Now AirView is also a new feature here which you can toggle on and off. You also have specific controls you can toggle on and off such as information preview, progress preview, speed dial preview, web page magnifier and that sort of thing. And basically this display is able to detect the presence of your finger over the display. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that. So for example, if I'm in a web browser here, if I hover my finger over the web page, I hear a little vibration indicating that it's working and I get a little magnifier here so I can take a look at my uh, website without zooming in and out on it. So you kind of have to hover your finger over the, maybe within an inch of the screen in order for it to work. That works pretty well. Now this also works with things like the calendar app. So if you hover your finger over an event on your calendar, you can see you get a little preview of it. This also works great right with the email app. So for example, if I hover my finger over the email, I can see more information. Now you can also have your finger over the gallery to get a preview of the images. Now, as I mentioned, you can also use gloves with the screen. So for example, I have these leather gloves here and it doesn't work great. So for example, if I'm using the tip of the glove, it's not quite good enough. So you have to use a little more surface area in order for that to work. And pinching and zooming isn't the greatest thing here. So you can see it's a little more clumsy, but if you had thinner, lighter gloves, this probably works a little bit better. Now we also have voice control, which is kind of interesting here. So if you enable voice control, you can answer or reject calls just by speaking to the phone. So for example, if your phone's laying on a table and you want to answer your call without picking it up, I have to do is say answer, or you can reject the call. Same with chat on, same feature. You can also, if, you, if your alarm goes off, you can say stop or snooze. If you're using your camera, you can say shoot or cheese or capture or record video. Same with the music app, you can say pause, next, previous, etc. In terms of interesting apps, there is group play, which works only with GS4s at this time. Uh, so if you have several GS4s on the same network, you can share similar islands and music. So for example, if we go to create a group, I just have to create a pin here. Click OK. So right now I can share music, I can share pictures, documents, and I can play a game together. So this is one way of linking with other devices. You do have to be on Wi-Fi. Now something interesting with share music, uh, you can actually play the same song on all devices. And if you have five devices, they'll actually act as uh, five channel uh, devices. So you have one speaker for each channel. So it's kind of a neat effect. Now we have another app here called Optical Reader, which uses the camera to find text in the real world. So for example, if you're looking at a sign here and you want to either scan the QR code or look for a definition of a word or translate the word, this is the app you use to do so. Like right now, it sees Samsung and automatically sees Samsung.com and I can launch a web browser, I can bookmark it, etc., etc. Also tap on the word here. There you go. Galaxy finds a definition and you can even have it speak to you. Galaxy. Now you can also use this to translate text. So if you go up here, you can change the input language. So this is Spanish and we can also change the output language as well. Uh, so right now, if you just hover the camera over the words, you can even select individual words. So you can see it automatically translates them for you. And you can even tap on some of the words, manual, handbook, information. So you get the idea, it actually works pretty well. You can even have it speak to you. Information. Also new with the Galaxy S4 is S Translate. So basically you can speak in one language and it will output in another language and you can select which language you want. In this case, I've selected German. So what I'm gonna do is speak in English. What's the weather like tomorrow in Berlin? So it gives me the text and I can have it speak to me. Ist das Wetter gleiche morgen in Berlin? Now we also have S Health, which is a pretty extensive health app, which basically allows you to monitor your intake of calories, how much movement you're making. It even has a pedometer. And Samsung does sell accessories which work with it, including a scale, blood pressure monitor, and heart rate monitor. So basically, if you're walking, this will record your steps if you don't have any of those accessories and keep a complete record for you during your day.
So if you go to your statistics, you can even see a breakdown by date as well as how many steps you've taken during the day. Now you can also monitor your food. So for example, we can list what we had for breakfast. We can even take a photograph. Uh, but for example, if we want to add something we ate such as yogurt, all we have to do is search for yogurt. So it searches the database and you can pick which one you ate. So let's go with vanilla low fat yogurt. Gives me the calorie count, so about 208 calories. You can even adjust the portion you had, so small or extra small. Now it's a pretty extensive app, so for example, you can record your weight. So I'm six foot 390 pounds and I need to lose some weight. And so if I go to update, yeah, I can adjust my weight for the day to see where, where I'm landing, if I'm meeting my goals and that sort of thing. Now we also have the Watch On app, which I've demonstrated in my Galaxy Note 8.0 video. So if we go to Watch On here, this actually uses the IR Blaster to control your TV equipment, such as your TV and your set-top box. So basically all I have to do is log in or identify your location, uh, identify your service provider, such as AT&T Uverse in my case, and I have to set up my equipment. So it, I'll have to do is specify the brand for my television and my set-top box. So I can even link my Netflix account, so I can automatically control my Netflix account from here as well. So here we are uh, controlling my Samsung TV. So I can see all of my listings currently available to me. So these are shows currently available. And if I want to launch any one of them, I just go to them and click Watch Now. It'll send the IR code to my set-top box and change it to that channel. And I can bounce back to my remote control to change the volume and turn the channel up and down. And I can even change my source and mute the volume. I can go to TV or my DVR to change those controls. So it otherwise works pretty good. So it's kind of nice to have your remote control in your phone at all times. Now Samsung has also done some interesting things with the keyboard. So if you tap and hold this icon, you can see you get the voice to text, which we're pretty familiar with. So we can, what's the weather like tomorrow in Detroit? Question mark. So there you go. So that's pretty familiar, but something they've added, which is new, is the ability to capture text from a photograph. So for example, if we launch this, so we go ahead and capture our text from this document. It's recognizing the text in the document. All right, so now I can resize this to select only certain text here. So I just want this part of the text. I can select that, click done. So it's recognizing the text and you can see it gives me the text. So not necessarily the most useful way of presenting this data, but if you click yes, it installs it into your document. So that's one way of getting text from a printed document into an uh, electronic document. Now we also have several other options here. So we can get our floating keyboard, if we tap that, and we can move our keyboard around. Now we also have Samsung's continuous input, which is a swipe-like keyboard, so we can demonstrate that. There we go, works pretty well. Now Samsung has also updated the phone dialer, so now you have this white user interface versus the black interface from the uh, GS3. Now one of my favorite things about text messaging with the GS4 is the fact that if you have a text message here, this is not a real phone number here, but if you want to message them again, all you have to do is swipe over the number like this. So if you want to swipe them, you can go to message, it takes you to the messaging app. And you can raise this to your ear to make a phone call, so we'll call that number. But if we go back here, you can also do that from this screen, so you can swipe Swipe to the right to make a phone call. So I'll bring up the phone dialer to call them. In terms of display quality, it is pretty amazing. So that 1080p resolution with 441 PPI gives you astounding detail. So for example, if you look at the full Verge website, you can read text right down to the microscopic level. So it's pretty amazing just how many pixels are crammed into this display. And although this is a pentile display, the resolution color look really good. It's not as bright as an LCD display like one on the iPhone 5 or the HTC One. But colors are amazing, uh, definitely very vibrant. The screen really jumps out at you. Uh, that's one of the benefits of OLED. And certainly you have excellent off-axis viewing. So you can see that uh, the screen looks beautiful off-axis no matter how you look at it. Now the only real drawback here is daylight performance. So if you're in a daylight situation, uh, like all AMOLED screens, they tend to get washed out by the bright sunlight. So that's something to keep in mind here. It's definitely not the best phone for out on a bright sunny day. Now the big story with the GS4 is the camera. Again, we have a 13 megapixel autofocusing camera capable of recording video at 1080p with stabilization among many other features, including things like dual shot and that sort of thing. Now one of the great things about this is we do have voice commands, so we can say things like shoot or record video. So there you go, we have integrated voice command as well. Now you can snap a photo while recording a video, or we can pause it, or we can stop it. 
Now on the right corner, we also have mode, which gives you a lot of features, which are kind of hard to demonstrate without people in front of it. But uh, you have things like beauty face, which will allow you to select the best face uh, out of the photos you take. You also have best photo, which will take a series of photos. So if we go ahead and click that, it'll take eight photos for you and you can scroll through them and select the best photo you want. You also have sound and shot. So this will record background sound for nine seconds after you take a picture. So for example, if we go ahead and do this, so this is a picture of Andy. He looks pretty green today. What do you think? So now if we go to our gallery. This is a picture of Andy. He looks pretty green today. What do you think? Now next up is dual shot, which basically allows you to use both cameras at the same time. So this is particularly useful, for example, if you're at a family gathering and you're the only person who's holding the camera, at least you can be involved in some way. So basically you can um, move your thumbnail around right now. So you can see you can move it around in the scene so you're not blocking anything and it records it live. You can also swap between the front facing and rear facing camera and you can move it around to get out of the way. And uh, so there you go, works pretty well, works pretty quickly. You can also turn off that feature. So if you don't want it to appear while you're recording, you can uh, toggle on and off pretty easily. And you can also change exactly how this displays. So for example, if you wanna change this around to something more artistic, so for example, we got a heart shape here. We have the window, which I was just using, instant pick, oval blur, stamp, fisheye, cubism and you can even do a split screen view. Now in terms of our benchmark scores, you can see that the uh, GS4 scored about 12,353 on the quadrant test. This is versus the GS3, which scored less than half that at 5,968. So quite a big jump there in terms of overall performance. Now if we look at the N22 benchmark scores, you can see that the Galaxy S4 is also at the very high end of devices, scoring about 25,000 compared to the GS3 way down on the list. Now in terms of performance, this phone is pretty quick, although there is some lag here and there. Uh, so you can see Android 4.2.2 has been used to full effect here. So everything is very smooth, very quick, uh, especially for a phone with so much software on it. Uh, they've done a pretty good job keeping up with everything that Samsung is throwing on these phones right now. Uh, so definitely one of the smoothest performing Samsung TouchWiz phones I've used to date, uh, but they could still stand to improve some things. So for example, if I bring down the drop down menu, sometimes it's slow to respond or even hangs up. Um, which seems to be intermittent. I can't reliably demonstrate it, uh, but it's there. It's definitely a concern of mine so far. Uh, but hopefully that's something they can improve with future software updates. Now, overall, the Galaxy S4 is a very impressive device, especially for everything that they've thrown in here. It even has a barometer, it has a humidity sensor, it even supports Wi-Fi 802.11ac, which is next generation Wi-Fi technology. So there's absolutely everything crammed into this phone with this beautiful 1080p display. So that's really what stands out about this phone. There really is nothing else like it. So you get a full five inch 1080p display that isn't too big. It feels very comfortable in my hand to hold, even though I have very large hands. Uh, but for me, it's a perfect size, that 5-inch display. So I'm, I'm really glad that they were able to increase the display size without increasing the footprint of the device. So it fits in your hand very comfortably despite being a fairly large phone. Uh, it's also very lightweight and thin. They've made this even lighter than the GS3, which makes a big impact here. This phone is very feather feather lightweight. I really, it feels really comfortable in the hand and I like the design here with the square edges which makes it more comfortable to hold. And I know a lot of people complain about the build and construction quality uh, or the material quality, uh, but I really like Samsung phones because they're nice and lightweight. This phone is much lighter weight than something like the HTC One, which although has a beautiful build quality, it's kind of a heavy foam, uh, which doesn't make it the most comfortable phone to handle over a long period of time. Uh, so for me, the fact that this is lightweight, thin, makes up for the fact that it's made out of plastic. And of course, it's really nice to be able to pop off this back panel to swap out the batteries so you can carry a battery around instead of an extra battery pack. Uh, and you can also upgrade your own RAM. So there's a lot of advantages to what Samsung is doing here. And I really have no complaints about the design or materials. All right, guys, so that's going to do for me in this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next one.